Anaba Mpueyeng. My name is Christina. Christina may look like a normal founder, but where she lives, she's extraordinary. Every time I tell people that I am the boss, they go, what? what? She lives in a place where most women own no property or a bank account. We are one of the bottom 50 countries for equal pay. Yet Christina has made a whole business helping smallholder farmers and their families in remote villages earn money. And she is the founder and COO. It was very difficult getting started. I wanted to help women living the furthest away from opportunities. And that meant going to places where nobody else would. Riding alone on her motorbike through rough and dusty roads just to help local farmers. It's scary to be the first person to do something. But I have to try, not just for myself, but for other women. Today, Christina's company, Soma Life, supports tens of thousands of Shia farmers living in rural areas by helping them sell their crops and gain opportunities. And Christina is only getting started. I want to say to my fellow Ghanaian women, that it's time to change our story and I enter this competition for you. Ladies and gentlemen, know that Christina is going to immerse us through AR into the beauty and the power of the savannah in Ghana and that's what you will be able to see and feel shortly. Please welcome our first hero, Christina Jusun of Soma Life. Ready? Yes. Yeah, Let's ready go. For you. Go ahead. Thank you. My story began in the poorest region in Ghana, the Upper West Region, where I was required to sell water in the local market at the age of nine to support my family. Of course, at the time, I didn't know that it was my training grounds for something huge. When I later discovered that there are over 16 million share producers, similar to those I engage in the local markets who live on less than $2 daily, I was deeply convinced to quit my job and mold a solution to end this injustice. The demand for share is through the roof, but the major market players are fragmented and undigitized. Additionally, there are changing traceability and fair trade requirements that they struggle to meet. The farmers continue to live in poverty, and the market lacks the technology to engage them. Summer Life solves this for both parties with our software technology, Tree Sites, creating economic value and climate resilience. With Tree Sites, we digitize the operations of smallholder farmers, empower them to be climate resilient through our conservation activities, and then connect them to international markets. This is how the farmers earn fair wages, while the buyers gain access to quality and traceable commodities in large volumes. Win win. We mark up their commodity with a 30% margin, and that is how we make money too. So it's actually a win, win, win. Our journey began three years ago with only 500 farmers in the poorest district in Ghana. By the end of 2022, we had connected 10,000 women to global markets who earn 21% extra income above local prices. Right now, 65,000 farmers have subscribed to our platform, with 94% of them being women. We ended our first year with a revenue of only $2,000. After trading 2 million kilograms of commodities our farmers produced in 2022, we increased our revenue to over $1 million. With the ABH price, we will be positioned to connect 300,000 women to the commodity and carbon market in the next five years. This will translate to 30% increase in income for the farmers, 250 jobs for young people like myself, and 30, uh, $70 million in revenue for us as a company. Ultimately, by the end of 2030, we want to lift 1 million farmers above the poverty line. Here I stand, leading the charge to realize this bold mission. Join us. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. And now, judges, in turn from Ibuku, Diane, and then Joe. Q&A starts now. Christina, Smile. thank you so much. 
kids. Well done for what you do. Thank you. And thank you for not just thinking about yourself, but thinking about other women. Yeah. And if you solve the problem for Ghana, you realize that there are many other parts of West Africa, yeah. which is the major region uh, for shea butter, yeah. what, that can be lifted up through the solution that you are developing. Yeah. You know, tell us what really got you here. What made this important to you and why you're committed to this process? I, I promise I won't cry, but I'll say it anyway. Uh, at the age of nine, I had to sell water in the local market and then I'll use the day sales to get food ingredients for my home. I remember vividly there were days I did, we didn't know where our next meal would come from. And this, I mean, I mean not more than ever before, as I've grown now, I understand that I went through these experiences so that other people do not have to go through the same. Um, that is why my team and I are committed to ensuring that we move rural people above the poverty line. Uh, I have lived the experience and I understand that they are not paid fairly for the value they create for the rest of us. And uh, we are working so hard towards that day where uh, rural people will be able to take care of their basic needs by themselves, afford good meals, take care of their basic, uh, uh, their children's school and education, uh, health care, afford uh, to save something in their bank accounts, and go to bed with no worries of where their next meal will come from. And I know this is possible with the amazing team I have at Summer Life. Okay, thank you. One, one more question. I'm wondering, you're talking about the very rural uh, female farmer or farmers yes. in general, but you're engaging them with technology as a tool yes. to provide the solution. How are you educating them to be able to engage with your platform. Thank you very much. So uh, our model is in the way that we work with young people. Uh, by the way, I'm here with my amazing team, field team, they are here in the audience coming to support me. So they're the ones that go to the field to profile the farmers. Uh, the only time the farmers have to engage with the app is when maybe we collect any data of them and they need to uh, confirm or verify the, uh, the data that has been collected of them. Uh, aside from that, what we are trying to do right now is to see how we will help the leaders, the cooperatives, the leaders, maybe a secretary, to be able to use the app. Look, we will look at those who have some level of education, so we, then we'll give them our tablet, so that if, even when we're not on the field, especially when it comes to tree monitoring, uh, they'll be able to do this uh, regardless of the, 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 our team on the field. So that is what we are trying trying to explore now, but for the meantime, they don't use it directly because ni about 99% of them are electric, so uh, we are trying to do, our field agents use the app on their behalf. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Christina, you. And, and welcome to Kigali. Uh, Thank you. I love your story. I think it's very inspiring, uh, lifting women out of poverty. I think that's very, very commendable. My question is on scale. So how do you achieve scale without crushing your profit margins? And, and when you think about scale, there's two things. First is, do you understand your cost of acquisition? Because I've seen you want to scale from 65,000 to 300K. So do you understand the cost of acquiring another 10K, 20K uh, farmers, especially that they are not digitally literate, mm -hmm. as, as Ibukun uh, mentioned? And the other thing is customer retention, because you might spend a lot of effort and energy in getting new clients, and maybe these women, you're creating expectations because they see now that they can do better. How do you retain them? Because probably they find other ways to grow their produce and sell through other channels. So how do you manage that? Okay, thank you. In terms of the, I'll answer the scale fair. In terms of the scale up, we are trying to uh, reach out to 300,000 farmers in the next five years, and we don't expect to do that alone. Aside from leveraging our current agency model that has been tried and tested in Ghana, we want to partner with some development organizations who usually have short-term projects. So once they are done with the farmers, we will onboard them to our uh, 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 initiative just to ensure the sustainability of whatever they taught the farmers, right? So that's one way we can achieve this without necessarily uh, paying for um, logistics need and all that to a field officers to go to these women, all the 300,000 women. Uh, aside from that, we're, we're also going to be ensuring that 
uh, we partner with other agribusinesses that are in the chain who also probably have these farmers already working with them. Uh, so far as looking at the, the impacts or the results we are bringing, I'm sure they'll be willing to let us work with their farmers as well. Uh, on customer retention, you see, when, when we got into the space, the women are excited to work with us because of the added value of uh, conservation activities. You know, share is a tree crop, and many of them didn't even know it was possible to raise share seedlings and transplant them. So with these activities, the women, aside from the income they are getting, they are excited to work with us. We've had situations where women do call us that, oh, this person came and wanted to buy my commodity and I'm not interested in selling with them because I want to work with you. So these are the other things we are trying to do and we are also trying to link them to the carbon market because we see that it's also incentivize them to do this tree uh, management at scale because it's going to be an additional source of revenue for them. So these are the things we are trying to put in place to uh, get the community loyalty on, going on. Thank you. Great, I understand. So you want partnerships and in an agency model to scale yeah. and to retain you want to cross sell and have, have other products or services yes. for, the for these uh, farmers so they can stick with you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Hi, Christina. Hello, Joe. Uh, great presentation and <clears throat> excuse me. What you're trying to do is uh, extremely important uh, because you're trying, you're trying uh, uh, not just reaching out to help uh, the smallholder farmers, uh, mo a lot of them are women, uh, but also using technology to digitize the information uh, that they come in contact with. Um, <clears throat> my question relates to how do you um, reach them, and I, I assume that even though your company only has 25 people, you must employ a a team of people that go out and try to reach them and what is the size of that uh, sales force if you will and uh, do they just take an iPad with the app and then they reach out to the farmers uh, can you describe that that uh, 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 that network of people that you work with and how do you manage them thank you very much so right now we are a team of 50 including myself yeah. and half of that is the field offices so these are field officers are people with degrees and they are based at the district level. So the district that have the commodities that we are interested in, we go there, we, we, look, we work with the Ministry of Food Agriculture to identify any young, energetic young person for us. Then we onboard them. We first need to train them to understand what our bundle of services are. Then we give them a tablet. Some of them have very good phones that can work with the app. But if it's not good, then we will give them our own tablet. And then they will go on to engage the farmers. So first, they go to the communities and they pitch our value proposition to them. Once they are interested, they take the first start with the profiling. So here they will take their bio data, social and economic data. Then after that, they will start with, depending on the year it is, the, the month of the year, they will maybe start with tree planting, conservation activities, they move on to purchase transactions like buying their commodities and paying them up front. They're moving their goods to the warehouse and then we sell it, moving it from our warehouse to our customers. And they have agent managers. So one of them is here, she's called Barretta. Uh, she manages at least, I think, eight, eight field offices right now, but we have three agent managers uh, who are based at that office and they manage these offices in different regions. So we are in all the five northern regions in Ghana and their managers are in our head office in Wa, the upper west region. So mm -hmm. that's how we manage them. Mm -hmm. uh, one, uh, and then on the, the other end, uh, you're connecting with uh, the, the large uh, food manufacturers and cosmetics companies, right? Yes and you eventually sell the commodities to them. Um, tell us about what that, what that uh, sales organization looks like. And do you personally call them? And um, okay. you know, how do you grow that uh, sale? Thank you. So when we started, I was the logistics person, sales person, and everything. And I met these buyers through the Global Share Alliance. So we have a, these are big buyers, so you will not find them on social media, but you go to conferences and you meet them, you establish contact, and from there, they have very big demands, like thousands of metric tons that we, since inception, we've never been able to even fulfill 100%. The maximum we did was last year, about 50% of the purchase orders that we received. So you, we send emails, we sign agreements, 
and then they say, this is what I want you to supply me for, for this man. It's just this year that we uh, set up a sales team or, or a business development team, and they are now taking off the sales team from me. I am slowly handing over these customers. And it's, qu it's quite hard for the customers to let me go because they are used to me, but I'm gradually letting them work with the sales uh, team now. So we now have a new sales team. And yeah, we are getting new customers. I think this, this year we've added uh, extra four, but in total we have about... Uh, 25 customers and they buy uh, very big volumes mm. yes thank, thank you thank you tell me I mean considering the picture you just painted now why are you trying to diversify into another product in between because if you look at the statistics you have presented the scale of the market of share butter and the possibility is so huge mm -hmm. and you're still just scratching the surface so why are you trying to get into another product like soya? <laughs> Thank you. So the, the soya thing really came just last year. There was this issue with the market last year, and the women called upon us to help them sell their produce. So we decided to just pilot with it, and we've seen, uh, we see that the value we've been able to create for them for the share, we could do the same for the soya. That's why we are trying to diversify and also to maybe cushion us against maybe today share is no longer a hot commodity we know we can probably fall on maize or soybeans so those are the reasons we are trying to explore other commodities so what what are your future plans in terms of being able to scale in a responsible manner and take uh, advantage of the opportunities that are still huge in the market um, the future plan is actually to go beyond the shores of Ghana. Uh, we just started piloting Burkina Faso. So we have a manager there already. Uh, we have about 5,000 women, which is not part of the 65,000 I mentioned. So those are the kind of things we are trying to do to be able to, um, depend on how the market is, maybe Ghana's, Ghana sales price, selling price is not good or something. We know how to cushion ourselves. It doesn't mean we'll stop buying from Ghana, but. Uh, Burkina Faso stock may be cheaper and then we'll use that to cushion ourselves, I mean, help with our bottom line away. So those are the plans that we have. Tell me, Christina, what is the biggest risk to your business model and how do you mitigate it? Uh, the biggest risk is paying farmers upfront. Uh, so it's a cash flow problem? Uh, yes, it's a cash flow problem. So, uh, one of our value propositions to the farmers is the fact that we pay them up front. These are people who are vulnerable and personally I don't want to pick their goods and go days before coming to pay. And that means we need to have uh, cash in the bank all the time to fund inventory. Uh, so that has been the main reason why we've not even been able to take advantage of all the purchase orders that we received. Last year I mentioned it was over $2 million. We only did uh, $1.3 million. This year is over $10 million. And we are looking but, but that can be solved easily with financing. Yeah. It's not really you know, something that would uh, keep you awake at night because you can work with your banker and, and find a way to do that, no? Well, I wish it was that easy, but uh, from where I come from, it's not really easy to get funding. Uh, even the bank that we've been working with since inception, we've applied to them twice and they're not taking us seriously. Uh, we just recently, we are trying to work with APSA and even they came late, it's just right now they send an email that they want to consider it. So the attempts are bad, basically. We usually fall on to uh, DFIs and angel investors based outside the, outside the country, even the continent, like uh, Rabo Bank is a Dutch bank, and uh, one of, some of our angel investors are Dutch, Dutch uh, people. So it's really not that, it's not really favorable for us to say yes to every money we get. So that has been the... My, that's why we've not been able to really uh, take advantage of all the opportunities we see. Well, I think that's a problem you need to work on yes. because it's your biggest limiting factor from what you've said. Yes. I'm, f I, I'm trying to figure out how you have the purchase orders. Your payments are in dollars. I know what's happened with the Ghanaian economy in terms of stuff. Dollar is king if you're getting dollar payment. And I'm wondering which financial institution knowing you have a track record of performance that will not be able to give you some advance in other to guarantee that the payment comes to them and your business continues. That's your biggest risk yeah. right now for you to grow. So you need to solve it. Sure. 
So uh, we, we are exploring ways to get this done. And I also want to add that one of the ways we are trying to mitigate this is to explore pre-financing from our customers. So now we've been able to establish this relationship with them over the years. And so we want to speak with them going forward. Can they pre-finance part of the business for us? Thank you. Thank you.